Hello, Jessica Frost Ballas here with a video for Ellen Hudson. Today I'm sharing a way to use the new essential rectangles for stitching to create woven cards. So let's get started. First I use the essential rectangles to die cut a frame from two A2 panels. Then I place a stitching rectangle slightly larger than the opening over the A2 panels and die cut it. I die cut both at once even though it will only cut through one panel at a time. It still impresses the design onto the second panel, making it easier for me to line up the die accurately along the embossed holes to die cut it next. This way I know the frames and stitching holes will match exactly. Next I take score tape and apply a thin layer around the inner and outer edges of one frame on all sides. Then I peel off the adhesive backing and adhere the second frame on top. This provides a nice sturdy frame for my weaving. I know I'll be using thicker roving and yarn, so I add a double layer line of foam mounting tape along the sides of my frame to give me a little more clearance on the bottom, and also to give even more stability to the loom. I won't be using the holes along the long side of the rectangle, so it doesn't matter that I'm covering them. Next I use thick cotton string to warp my loom. You can use embroidery thread or other threads, but you want something that's sturdy and doesn't have a lot of give. I estimate the length of thread I'll need by counting the holes across the top and pulling the length of thread across the loom that many times. Then I use a large needle to thread the string through my first hole from the back to the front. I tie a knot in the end of the string to keep it from pulling through the hole. Then I thread the needle through the coordinating hole on the bottom of the frame, front to back. I move to the next hole and thread the needle through back to front. As you see, I'm really good at putting knots in my string while I'm working. Once I get rid of the knot, I run that string across the length of the frame and through the hole from front to back. I repeat this process until all the holes are covered. The front of the loom should not show any string running from left to right, only top to bottom. Once you've gotten to the end, take a moment to adjust the tension of the string as necessary. Again, you don't want it so tight that the frame bends, but you do want tension. You can pull and adjust the string to tighten the tension, then tie a knot on the back of the frame to secure your warp thread. Now you'll add a double layer of foam mounting tape to the top and bottom of your makeshift loom to cover up the string and stabilize the loom. 
I use a little tape to cover the ends of my strings before placing the foam mounting tape on top. Now your loom is ready for weaving. I've placed mine on a piece of black cardstock so that it's easier to see. I'm working on a rainbow arch in today's piece, so to make it easier, I fussy cut an arch from a piece of cardstock. I weave that through my warp strings to give me a guide for my weaving. To start, I'll be using wool roving for my rainbow. Roving is a long and narrow bundle of fiber that has been cleaned and carded, but has not yet been spun into yarn. It's soft and fluffy and is a favorite for adding texture to woven pieces. There are lots of online places that carry roving, and you can also find vegan options using plants like banana, hemp, and bamboo. Roving can be gently pulled apart, no need to cut it, and separated into small sections. If the roving is a little frizzy, as this is, I'll lightly spray it with water and gently rub it between my hands to felt it slightly. This just helps the fibers grip better. For today's project, I'm doing a simple tabby weave across my loom, which is a basic over and under pattern. When I reach the end, I tuck the end of the roving under the second to last string so that the end tucks to the back. Then I use my fingers to gently tug the roving up so there's a little dimension in each loop. I repeat this process for the rest of my colors, alternating the over and under pattern for each new color. I keep the ends tucked in towards the back to deal with later. Once I've added all my rainbow colors, I fill in the top with a chunky off-white yarn. I tie the end around my warp string and then weave it back and forth across my loom. Here I'm only using a few strings at a time until I even out the white yarn with the highest point of my rainbow. Then I can go back and forth across the full panel to fill up the rest of the space. I'm using a weaving needle here to work a little quicker.
Of course, I'm using roving and chunky yarn here, but you could also use embroidery floss, ribbon, or any type of yarn you have in your stash. It's just a fun way to use card making products in a different way. As I get towards the top, I push the yarn down to condense it and give me space to work. Once I'm finished, I can push the yarn around to fluff it back up. After the top is finished, I remove my guide piece and repeat the process with white yarn across the bottom of my panel. Again, don't worry if you need to move the yarn and roving around, because you can always fix it later. Because this will be a card and not a hanging tapestry, it's a little easier to clean up the ends. Here I just loosely tie the ends of the roving in knots so that they can't be pulled through the front. I also tie the white yarn ends together. Then I remove the backing of the foam mounting tape and adhere the panel to a white card base. Next I cut a white frame and add adhesive to the back. I adhere this over my panel to hide the stitching holes and give it a nice finished look. At this point, I'm almost done, so I can use a needle to adjust any roving or yarn to make sure it's exactly where I want it. I add a simple sentiment to the card with temporary adhesive so that the recipient can leave the sentiment or remove it to just display the weaving. There are tons of ways to use these dies, and I hope you'll give weaving a try. And that's it for me today. You can find more information on all the products I used over on the Ellen Hudson blog, and I hope you enjoyed today's card. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, have an amazing day and happy crafting. Bye!